It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Let's talk about 30-year-olds. I get a visual when I think about this one, Bo. Oh, okay. I'm, I love The door's that. cracked. Do you knock? Timidly, you know, let me in. Opportunity. Right. I need you. Or do you Chuck Norris's thing, or maybe it's more like Passenger 57, Wesley Snipes, and you kick the door down. I was thinking like King Leonidas, you know, when he kicks the guy into the hole, 300. That's the kind of kick I was thinking. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. It's got Nine Inch Nails music in the background. Yeah, so I can, kinda, I can get like on that. board with that. So the door is cracked, meaning that when you cross the threshold of becoming a 30-year-old, that, that, that crucial period between 30s and 40s, I think you're starting to figure things out. We talked about, when we were talking about 20-year-olds, we talked about get your 10,000 hours so you can become an expert, so you get mastery. I'm going to assume by the time you reach your 30s, you're starting to get some of that stuff figured that's right. out. Um, the only problem with your 30s, Oh, man, this happens so quick. <laughs> Life starts getting complicated. Just a tad. It just happens. I, I don't know what why it happens, but it does. All of a sudden, you you decided you were going to buy the farm. So you own a house. Maybe have a few kids. You found somebody you loved, and you've gotten married. Yep. And then you know, and then from that that love, you've created you know some some little tricycle motors. Uh, maybe you got some more community involvement. You have more responsibilities at work. Uh, maybe you have more options through work. You just, things are complicated. So things are complicated, but then also I don't want to lose sight of the fact that this is still, because I I talked about, if you haven't seen it, if you're, if you're a a 20 year old that's catching a look of what your future will look like in your thirties, we talked about in 20 year old, 20 year olds have the easiest opportunity Mm -hmm. to take advantage of compounding interest. But here's the good news. If you missed your twenties, thirties is a great time. You still getting double digit exponential growth on any dollar you put to work. And we're going to go deeper into that. But I first want to kind of stop and focus and talk about planning opportunities. Yep. What are 30-year-olds, what should they be focusing on? First, let's talk about cash reserves and risk management. Uh, you know, we just said your life gets uh, more complicated now. It's not just you alone. You have people depending on you. If you're someone who's married or if you're someone who uh, has kids or if you're someone who has parents depending on you, whatever the case may be, if there are folks depending on you, you got to make sure you have your emergency reserves. Yep. And then you have to make sure you have all of your bases covered from a risk management perspective. So that's three to six months of emergency reserves. Yep. That's life insurance, yep. disability insurance, estate documents like wills and healthcare directives and powers of attorney. You got to make sure you have those p- base of the pyramid items in order. So let's peel off a few of those layers. So first thing, I think wills, if you have children, if you do, I mean, that's somebody that's counting on you. If you and look, I get it. It's such a odd, horrible, dark conversation Morbid, yeah. to have with somebody. But if you think it's hard while you're living, let the state have it after you're gone. I mean, it yeah, is. It will be so a true. disaster. So go ahead and figure out what you want to have happen to the children. Lay those those expectations and plans out in the will. And then the second thing is, you know, life insurance. You have to be careful with this one because I've talked about you have now reached the level where you got a few things figured out. You're probably starting to have a little bit of financial success. Right. People can sniff, funny, or smell, as they, they won't can, sniff. They, they can, can smell, smell a little bit of financial success, and that's where life insurance salesmen will start showing mm-hmm. up. Yep. And um, I would tell you to be careful because your biggest goal is you want to replace income and obligations. You, you, you're counting on that your assets will be growing, so it will be hopefully over time a decreasing need to replace your income sure. as you build financial independence. So we do like, you know, we like term insurance. Yep. It's cheaper. Uh, you know, our t- general guidelines try to get enough term insurance that will carry you past when you think you'll be financially independent and have the kids out of the house and take into account any outstanding mortgages or debts that you might have as well. You know, the real loose rule of thumb, and and we're actually working on this. This is something we've been working on for a while, but the loose rule of thumb is you want to have about 10 times your annual income in term life insurance. Just like you said, there's some things that come into play there, but that's a nice sort of real easy baseline to kind of think about in terms of what you should have. Here's another planning opportunity. How about living on the wild side? Whoa! Hold on. Did 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 CPA yeah. accountant same haircut since third grade? Brian Preston. If you want to know where I am a wild man? Besides in my Tesla going zero to forty, because <laughs> I am I'm a demon from zero to forty. The other part where I look back on my life and go, man, what a, a freaking cowboy <laughs> is go start a business or, or oh, do something yeah. crazy where you move. If you, this is the time, I think in your early thirties, you could do it also in your late twenties. But it's, it is that time where you can walk on the wild side and the fact that there's some crazy risk 
It's better to do it young than it is to do it old. So if you're thinking about changing careers, if you're thinking about moving to another part of the country, if you're thinking about, you know, starting that business venture, this is the time to come up with that crazy thing. And, you know, the big thing, and Bo hinted at this in the, 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 in the 20 year old series is you got to be an expert. So make sure you don't bypass the 10,000 hours. Uh, make sure you also don't bypass the planning. A lot of us have hopes and dreams, but if you're not writing it down, if you're not planning, if you're not measuring twice, cutting once, it's a dream. It's not a plan. So even though I'm telling you, go take the risk, go make the jump, you only do this like a CPA, like me, where you've measured twice, cut once, done spreadsheets. You've done this thing within an inch of its life, yep. and you have a better, you just know within your heart and your soul that this thing is going to be successful, so you're going to go attack it. That's exactly right. So let's now talk about wealth deconstructed with what's your human capital. You should be, you're, you're now past the stage of just basic education, yep. but you can invest in your human capital still by trying to find a mentor. Yeah, I think this is so powerful. If your 20s was all about the potential that you had, your 30s now becomes that area where you should begin recognizing that potential and begin actually stop thinking about what you could be and actually becoming what you're going to be. I think yep. that's what the 30s do. And a mentor is just an amazing place to do that. Found someone who's done the things that you want to do the way you want to do and is where you want to be and just drink up everything they'll give to you. Yeah, you don't have to even benchmark them. Instead of you reinventing the wheel, it is great to go find somebody because that's going to go hyper, I think it's going to exponentially help your yep. success. That's right. I, I, I will say, and, and look, but I'm going to selfishly say, I think our relationship... I have no doubt you're going to be able to catapult where I was at sure. your age yep. just off of the fact that you you know a lot more than I knew because I was still figuring it out. Of course. You yep. may, you're going to leverage that knowledge and essentially take it to a whole nother Absolutely. level. And that's exciting stuff. <laughs> and, and by the way, it doesn't have to be a peer. I think a lot of people think when you see mentor, you think it has to be a boss. I will tell you guys, when I started my, th this, my first version of this company in mm -hmm. 2002, I met somebody at a, or I saw somebody speak at a conference, and I was bold enough that I approached that person and actually developed a relationship yep. with her. And she turned out to be a huge influence on the way I designed my firm, yep. the way I learned how to make money. I mean, there's a lot. Her fingerprints are all over the mentorship of that. So it doesn't have to just be a peer. And, Bo, you've even joined a professional organization yeah, that helps. I, I'm a member here in Nashville of an entrepreneur's organization, and it's just been amazing talking to guys that have started businesses, built businesses, sold businesses, and then done it all over again, and just learning from all the things that they've been able to do and success to do, and it's just a, a, a group of like-minded folks. It's amazing how much value you can get from those folks, even if they're not in the same field or same age or from the same part of country or have the same education. Just surrounding yourself with those people can be un unbelievably valuable. So open up your ears and you know, and open up your heart for any opportunities that might be coming yep. your way. So let's talk about financial roadblocks. You got to keep, we told you, you're probably crazy enough. You went out and bought the farm. You probably have bought a house or a townhouse or a mm -hmm. condo, something. You got to keep that mortgage within check because right. lifestyle creep is a real legitimate thing. And one of the biggest ones is you're buying your, your house. Try to keep that mortgage 20, 25 to 28% of your income. So you're not house rich, life poor. That's right. And, you know, I think one of the things that a lot of folks in their 30s, they, you know, once you've kind of started to have some success, you start to think about stretching and getting out there. And, and there's some merit to that. We've done shows on that in the past. But you just have to be careful how far you stretch because there are the things you want to become and the places you want to go and the things you want to be. But until you're actually there, there's a time and a place to be able to do those things. So you might not be buying your dream home at 32 years old. I mean, yeah. maybe you are. But that's a kind of counter to the way things actually work. So make sure, did you already say 25, 28% of your gross income is where you want Don't your housing it. payment Yeah, to be. it's not worth faking it. And then I think it's also, before we kind of move on to the army of dollar bills, is those life things that we've already talked about under planning opportunities, guys, they really are roadblocks too. Yep. If you are not checking those boxes, you know, looking at the, the estate documents, the wills, the life insurance, they can be huge roadblocks to your, right. to your future. So be very careful of that. Disability insurance, I don't know if we mentioned That's that. A huge Umbrella one. insurance, yep. those are things. If you don't know what those are, we've got resources. Just go to moneyguy.com. And, and Search we got the archives. Yeah. They're in there. So let's talk about <laughs> army of dollar bills. Is, is it so bad this is the part I get the most excited about on every one of these? I know, because we, we actually let people know where they are financially. This is, remember, your 20-year-olds, man, that's the easy money. 
That is easy living because your money is doing all the heavy lifting mm -hmm. hard work. It's 90 to 95% growth because it's 88 times over if you're That's a 20-year-old right. that starts out. But guess what? You 30-year-olds, you're not leaving it behind. There's still potential, tremendous potential, especially when you compare it to your 40-year-old and your 50-year-old peers out there. You still, every dollar you invest, and let me tell you what, what's in, you know, what I'm putting into this. I'm assuming a dollar investing in it's a little more conservative than that 20 year old mm -hmm. now you're only making nine percent per year not right. not ten percent like the 20 year old right. so you might be doing a target retirement fund that's still aggressive sure. but if you did an, a compounding of nine percent rate of return and you did it for the next 35 years for a 30 year old so you're really going to 65 mm -hmm. you have the potential to turn one dollar into 23 dollars that's still incredible it's, a, it's now, awesome it's not one to 88 but it's still 1 to 23. But here's what I get so excited about. Let's say you're someone that's listed in your 30s, and, and you did that thing in your 20s mm -hmm. that you were supposed to do, and you saved in your 20s, and you turned it, and you turned it, and you turned it, and you're that person we said that was a nice average accumulator, and by 29, you had $57,000 saved up by the time you turned 30, yep. right? That was what you had saved up. You realize that $57,000, that work that you have already done, by the time that you get to age 65, will be worth $1.3 million without you having to save one more dollar. And all you did there was take the 57000 and did it by the 23 that's multiple. That's exactly right. That's, that's powerful stuff. You're a millionaire off of what you did in your 20s. That's exactly right. Letting that money do the heavy lifting. You just said something beautiful. What you do in your 20s alone can make you a millionaire. Forget it's what you true. do in your 30s. No forget what you do in your 40s. What you do in your 20s alone can make you a millionaire. That's incredible. Easily. And the other thing, here's the thing. I think a lot of you guys, because we hear from you, we work with clients all across the country, and a lot of you guys are hyper savers, young, and we love it. If you want to know who gets us excited, it is our clients that are these super hyper savers that come to us in their early 30s and they already have several hundred thousand dollars accumulated. Remember what we said previously, just to review, a person in their 20s, you need to be focusing on the act of saving, the behavior of saving more than where you need to put those savings. Yep. So we recommend doing something like a target retirement fund, a low cost index driven target retirement yep. fund. I do think when a person gets somewhere between two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars, you focused on that behavior of saving, but now you're starting to build up some assets. I mean once you get to three hundred thousand dollars of assets, you're now you're like a CEO of an operation. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> you might want to have it's time to step up and hire a CFO or somebody to give you a second opinion yep. or just somebody to bounce ideas off of. And that's where you can start moving past the target retirement funds and maybe consider going with worried about asset location, asset allocation, right. you know, your risk profiles. There's all kinds of things that will go into that and how they integrate into, you know, do you want to retire early? Do you have some crazy, you know, bombastic goals that you yep. want to do? You know, it, it, all that stuff can become custom. And that's why it might make sense to, to go and, and see if there's some opportunities to work with somebody that's out there professionally that's for right. you. Um, let's also talk about another strategy that I love to focus for my 30-year-olds, dollar cost averaging. Oh, man. That's I mean, we were at lunch with somebody today, somebody I think the world of, yeah. and she was asking us for guidance on, hey, I've got a huge bonus payment coming in. How should I take advantage of this? How should I use it? Yep. And one of the things, after we talked about cash reserves, after we talked about do you have the money you know, set aside for car, Future house big purchases, expenses, big yeah. expenses, now that chunk of money that's left since it's still a large sum of money, Dollar cost average. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not only, it's not just for large sums of money, too. That What those what it does when you dollar cost average, it helps you out with volatility. That's right. Um, and just because we've had some here yeah. recently, especially with large sums of money. If you want to go in, because a lot of you are like, yeah, but you should have lumped some. We've done a whole show on that. Go That's check right. it out in our archives. But I also like the fact that dollar cost averaging is a behavior. If you'll just get addicted to saving and investing you become an empire builder. Mm -hmm. It's not just large lump sums of money. I want this to be a cash management type plan That's where right. every dollar in your army of dollar bill has a purpose and a mission, and you're actually putting it out there to work for you so it can do that heavy lifting for you. That's so work cool. on that for scarcity and that cash management plan where every dollar is doing something for you. So we did this thing where we said, okay, the 20-year-old might say, ah, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to start saving away until my 30s. And we talked about how much more valuable a 20-year-old's dollars was than a 30-year-old's dollars. Yeah. Let's do it again, and let's talk about the 30-year-old versus the 40-year-old. How much more powerful is a 30-year-old's money 
than a 40-year-old. Just one decade separates them. How much more powerful? Well, I did this for you guys that are wired like me, where you need some coping mechanisms. You might be a hyper saver. You're doing, you're checking all the boxes. But there's, and this is just a fact of finance, guys. There's always going to be somebody who has more. Yep. So I'm trying to give you some tools to help you equalize, to at least know, yeah, that person who's five years older, eight years older, 10 years older has more, but maybe they didn't have more when they were my age. Because yeah. I think there is a coping yep. tool that you can use there. So let's understand this. A 30-year-old versus a 40-year-old, the 30-year-old's opportunity is still 214% better than the, the 40-year-old, meaning that that dollar, and let me break this down for you. Remember, a 30-year-old, can t- by the time they're 65, that money will have multiplied 23 times. That's right. A 40-year-old, that number drops down to seven times. So if you see that factor, it, it quickly builds up to where it's almost, you have the potential to almost make it three, well, you do have a chance to make it three times, mm-hmm. but the growth potential's 214%. That's right. Um, if you look at the 30 versus 50-year-old, it's seven. Your money in your when you're in your 30s, the opportunity is 712 percent more powerful than your 50 year old peers. So that's a great thing, you know. Next time you're at home for a holiday or something like that, and you're going to talk to one of your uncles or your relatives, just go let them know how much more powerful your money is at your age 30 than their money is at their age 50. It's not really a tool for bragging. It's more of a tool for coping and knowing <laughs> where you stand with things. So, But that does lead us. I want to kind of talk about, let's now spot check where should you be in your 30s. Now, here's the thing. This is new since the last time we did this, mm-hmm. this type of topic. Fidelity has actually done some research. I don't know that I completely agree with it, but this is the Money Guy Show, and we like to give you multiple facets and avenues so they have this cool little diagram, and I'm going to send this over to Morpheus so he can make sure he, he does a better okay. screenshot than this. But it, it basically shows for um, the, the first stop on this, this rocket ship tr- ride. They use the rocket ship, I'm sure, to show how explosive your That's growth right. potentials are. They want you to blast off towards retirement. That's the title for this. When you're 30... Your first goal or stop on the rocket ride is you want to have one times your salary. Okay. So, so if you compare that to what we did for a 29-year-old, I, I hate to back us up, yeah, but yeah. We, had, we had said somebody who makes $40,000. $41,288. They need to be around $57,000. That's right. So, so a little, little bit little more off. than one time. We're, we're yep. a little more, we want you to have more money working more. for you. But I, I do want to share that one times is there. there. Let's talk about the Money Guy Wealth Index. Okay. Review, Bo, once again, we have perfected, that's right, I used the word perfected, the old formula, which was age times income divided by 10. Talk about what we did again. Yeah, so if you're someone who's not at least 40 years old, that formula just doesn't work for you because you don't have the time. So Takes you off. Here, you leave troll comments is what happens. <laughs> so here's what you need to do. You need to take your income, multiply it by your age, and then divide by 10 plus the number of years you have until retirement. So... If you are a 30-year-old, you take 30 times your income divided by 10 plus 10, so a number of years until you're 40. So you divide by 20. So by the end of your 30s, or by the time you get to age 40, where should you be? Well, if we go back to the Bureau of Labor Statistics and we look at the average income for the average 39-year-old in this country, the current average income is $50,492 a year in annual salary. So if we take 39 times 50,492 and divide by 10 plus 1 or 11, your net worth at age 39 should be $179,017 if you just want to be on the curve, average accumulator of wealth. But we're mutants. We're financial mutants. We want you to have twice that much. So you'd be at three hundred and fifty-eight thousand. That's right. And if you're married, meaning both you, both of the the, the spouses are working, that number might be seven sixteen. So a lot of you guys are like, "Wow, that's somewhat aggressive." Yep. But I, I, I'm okay with that. I do think that, and I don't want to undervalue that adjustment to the formula. You guys that are 30, 31, 34, 35, you're going to be like, I love this adjustment because it's going to give you much better perspective and it'll probably cut down on our troll comments by a factor of 10. I have no doubt whatsoever, but I love this automating and looking at where you should be saving. And this ties in, I remember, and I've shared these in the past, my goals, when I reached 30, I wanted to make $100,000 a year. When I was 40, I wanted to have seven figures of liquid capital. Now, I came short on both of those by about a year. 
So I think, it, but I love that formula. Came really close, mm-hmm. you know, coming in at thirty nine, right at seven hundred thousand dollars. That's that's getting close to that sure. trying to reach seven figures liquid when you're forty. I think that's a very aggressive goal, but I think it's a doable goal yep. if you if you're one of these people that's willing to focus on saving early. So do it often. Focus on it, because if you do the hard work when you're young, and by the way, Bo and I did tons of research for this show that's going to lead into, lead into even more content. We really did find that 20 and 30-year-olds, you are the easy decision makers. If you will make the commitment and the sacrifice when you are in your 20s and 30s, life gets a heck of a lot easier as we move into this next part of our show, which is the 40s, 50s, and 60-year-olds.